So, 2018? 19? I think it was 19. I sat on a bench at Two Thousand Trees, and I'm introduced to you, and I go, "Oh, you're a bass player. <laughs> I'm from an amp company. Would yeah. you be interested in checking out our amp amps?" I had a picture of the amps that we made at the time, and you were like, "Nah." See, I don't remember it going specifically like that. I remember, um, I remember being interested. I'm like, you know, it's Ben from Laney talking to me. Like, I, I definitely would be interested. But yeah, I think the, mo the particular model that you were showing me, yeah, it wasn't to my taste yeah. for sure. I think um, I knew that. I think I, kn I knew it deep down inside. I was like, I so, think I was trying to be nice about it. Yeah, I think <laughs> you were. Like, Ben, you were. Yeah. You know, like, um, not for me, but oh, I might check them out. Yeah, yeah. They're like, let's sort a date. And it's one of them, like, we're never going to sort a date. But I appreciate it. Yeah, but I think and we I, exchanged numbers at that yeah, point, didn't we? Did, we did, yeah. Because um, I said, but I've got an idea. And if it comes to fruition, like, you, you'll be up for it, man. Like, yeah, just, yeah. just let me cre curate that idea. Yeah. Um, and did that conversation kind of not dictate but it, was did, it, did, it, did, it, did it pave the way for what this is 100 percent. there was your the conversation with you <laughs> this is good this is quite cool actually there was the conversation with you and then there was one other conversation i had and it was with vadine white who's the founding member bass player inventor of slap bass um wow. from earth wind and fire and it was literally you two wow and um i I know his sound, and then I heard your sound, and I was like, I know how to make that sound from our the old type of amp that we had. Yeah. But it's I know this product inside out, and it shouldn't be that hard to get what would be typically described as a classic bass tone. Yeah. <laughs> Should not be that hard. Um, and they were good amps, obviously. <laughs> um, but it just wasn't right. Um, so then I came back here to Laney HQ and I was like, look, I've had a conversation with a couple of different artists and it's just, <laughs> this amp isn't right. We, yeah. And the irony with it all is we, like Lyndon Laney started, he was a bass player. He, the reason he built the first amp in 1967 was because he was playing with, John Bonham was a drummer, yeah. Robert Plant's a singer. They did a, they, it was their school band, they called the Band of Joy. Yeah. And um, they were like, Lyndon's on bass, but he didn't have an amp. <laughs> so he was like, so well, I'll make one. <laughs> he studied fairly study physics, he was like, I'll make one. And then I looked down the line and we haven't really pushed bass. Like we haven't done it properly. If somebody said to me, <laughs> like, you need to make yourself an amp, otherwise you'll never be able to play in this band, I'd have to give it up. I would not know where to start. <laughs> honestly. Well, quite honestly. Yeah. Like he, oh, just, that's just cool, isn't it? It's, yeah, like, it's very, like, of, it's very of the time as well, like post-war Britain. Like, oh, I want to do something new. Yeah. So I'm going to make it. When, when, what year was this? That's sixty. It's sixty-six. That would have been sixty-five, sixty-six, because they wow. wanted to do a pop group yeah. because they're looking at bands like the Stones and the Beatles and Cream yeah. in the in the charts and like, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll have a go at that because they they went to school together. Yeah. And um, but then. As the band developed and Robert and John were like, we're going to go off to meet people in London and stuff. They played gigs all over the country. Lyndon was like, you know what? I'm going to stay here and do these amps. He was meant to go to Reading University to study physics. Um, but he was like, oh, I've got my amps and I'm building them. And he was building them for so Tony Omi from Sabbath and Slade were having them and stuff. Yeah. Like Argent as well. God gave rock and rolls here. And um, in Coliseum, and even a band um, the, bef the the were um, ELO before ELO started. So all the bands in Birmingham, really, and they were like, oh, yeah, we'll get this guy to build us an amp. Yeah. And um, so he took a gap year instead of going to university, and that's 53 years ago. Yeah. 50, yeah, 53, four years ago. Um, that's amazing. But the cool thing with that is his son, James, is now the CEO. So obviously there's the there's the family thing there, which is really cool. Yeah. And 
like I came back from having that conversation with you. I was like, it's just these amps are wrong. We just we're there's we can do more than this. Yeah. And I'm not having that conversation with another member of my department or whatever. I'm having that conversation with the CEO whose yeah. last name is on the amps. Do you know what I mean? Definitely, so yeah. And knowing that he like we had a prototype of a new amp that we were possibly gonna do and it was just like it's just not right. That's um, the thing, and you do need to go and, and talk to the people you're gonna make it for. But that's how this came along. And straight like honestly, all through it, I've been like, when it's done, if it's right, so I've been testing it and as well as other people, making sure the sound's right. I'm like, the test will be you. Yeah. This is so mad that it's actually I mean, came together. This, like, is, this is yeah, it's it's really I'm honored to be to be quite honest, because I wouldn't have just this is why I've not really had many endorsements. It's because I've been pretty happy with my setup, you know. Um, but I know like Sean and Matt, they've been they've had guitars and endorsements thrown at them. But um, and I'm not bitter about that <laughs> <laughs> at all. Uh, disclaimer. Um, but you know, like I'm I'm a person who who loves like my vintage guitars. I love the sound of them. Um, I've had like discount prices on on um, loads of stuff like Orange Heads. I'm, I was technically an artist for Orange at one bit and, you know, getting discount prices and that, and that was fine for me because I, I liked my rig and, and, and that's, that's what I wanted. I think um, particularly with, I think it's a bass player thing, but I think it's also a personal thing where I do have a lot of boxes that need to be ticked yeah. for, for the right sound and for the right look and, and for what I want to play. Um, and I wouldn't have just gone to anybody. The reason why I wanted to come to Laney, one, because you're, you're such a nice dude. And I think we bounce off each other quite yeah. well, but just that like, the history of Laney, I think is it almost matches the ethos of yeah. sleeps because this is a dude, like you said, who was literally didn't have an amp to play through. So we built one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's been the entire ethos of sleeps as we've kind of come up through the years, you know, like we lost the, practice room that we religiously met in a few times a week to honest, quite honestly, like smoke weed, drink beer and just, just play music. And when yeah. we lost that, we didn't, you know, we found ourselves with, with nothing. Mm -hmm. Like we, I, we literally got a small little hole in the wall um, in Sheffield to, to practice in for a couple of years. And we're like, do you know what? We need something ourselves. We need that like vibe again, if we're going to create any more records and just to work together properly. So we built the warehouse and that's, that's our HQ. That's where we create stuff. It's like mo most people, you know, when, when we're off tour, that's, that's where we go. That's, yeah. that, that's our job to turn up to. Um, and I think that's why I don't, I don't think we'd have not only the songs that, that we've written that place, but I don't think we'd have the success that we've gained in most recent years without that place mm. because that's what we need that place to just to, to meet up and like bounce off each other and get and create that vibe. You that's know? Like your hub, isn't it? It's totally yeah. the hub. Yeah. And yeah. And, th and this is why like, I think just especially like the aesthetic and everything to do with this line. Like when I came down last, last July, was it? I think so. Yeah. July, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> lifetime away now, isn't it? Um, yeah, like instantly, you you said you didn't expect it to be, you thought you were going to have to really sell this to me. And you know, and, and I assume like you will probably be going off of the last conversation that we had in 2000 Trees. But I turned up and I don't, I didn't know what I was expecting, to be yeah. quite honest. But straight away, I was just like, it's exactly the sound that I'm looking for. But well, wait, like for four years, well, I've been with Laney for like five years, but with the older bass stuff, I sort of had sort of my, like my spiel sort of yeah. planned out. So I know, so with this new, you were the first person outside of this building to try it. Right. So, and again, it comes back to, because you, you know, I was like, if, if Aaron gets it, then I've, I'm onto something with it. Yeah. Like we are onto something with this range. Um, and I was so excited. Like we were literally just stood here and we didn't even have the 810 yet. But yeah. We were using an older 810 and you plugged it in and I was ex I was really ready to go, yeah, and it's got um, effects in and out on the back. You can, if you pull the second channel volume knob, it'll blend both channels and it's good. I was expecting like what tilt does, like, you know, yeah. it throws low end or higher. 
I was really expecting to go through it. You plugged it in and just went, Shoot. yeah, or, or I can tell. It, well, yeah, I, I can tell. I can tell straight away because there's been so many like amps, like amp companies that have come to me over the years and, and I've turned them on and I can tell straight away whether yeah. I'm going to like it or not. And obviously you need to dial in the sound, but like you just, you just know sometimes yeah. the dynamics of the sound aren't there right off yeah. the bat. But with this... I don't know like what the knobs were turned to at the time of turning it on, but I was just like, oh yeah, it sounds fucking amazing. Because I like try and get a really like nice, well-rounded tone out of out of the head before I start taking it to some effects pedals. Yeah. And if I can get that, because that's the foundation of the whole sound of it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, and, and I'm somebody who's not really technically minded with with this kind of stuff i like a really user-friendly interface yeah. that's what i'm all about that's why i liked orange for so long um but obviously like if i was to pick a company if i was to hand pick a company i would hand pick laney to be quite honest to to support me and and vice versa and yeah just everything about it's just really simple you you, you just want the no frills just easy to use, but sounds amazing yeah. piece of equipment. And that's what all this line is to me. It's well, I, it's so easy to use and it's amazing. But I think for me as well, coming back and... Because there have been little tweaks made since you even tried it in July. Yeah. And the, what I like, so sort of like the, the symmetry between your story, your band, and us as a company, like, like naturally... Like, you'll be able to hear that there's noise going on around here. It's because this is a working factory. Yeah. Like, this is... Like, we're in Hales Owen, just south of Birmingham, in England, and these amps are built here. And we... It is a working factory, and I like the fact that if, for instance, when we were testing it, after after you came here in July last year, um, any feedback you had, I walked out of them doors, upstairs, into the R&D and said, right, we've had the first person try yeah. it. And I sort of just told the R&D people, right, when the speakers come, we, when the cabs come, they, like, they've got to be versatile on all this business. And I love that sort of synergy, how even though we've been going for 53, four years now, yeah. well, I'm seeing this as like a startup because it is fresh, this is new. And I like, so the, the symmetry of that is like you, what you guys have done with the Patreon and stuff. And it's like the world has hit the weirdest time ever and you haven't just rested on your laurels and gone, well, okay, well, we, well, we make music, to to we work, can still it? make music. Like the same with us, like we make amps, we still make amps. Yeah, it's time to get to work. And that's, yeah. and, but this is, this is what I really love about this relationship now. It's like, you've been an integral part of creating this whole line. You're somebody who, you know, with exchange numbers, we can just send a text to each other at any time. You know, I've, like I said, like it, it takes a lot of boxes for me to like work with somebody yeah somebody's just not going to bullshit me do you know what i mean there's there's so much of that in this industry and i can sniff it out a mile off now i've yeah. been involved in it 12 for 12 years do you know yeah. what i mean and and i don't get that with you i don't get it with laney and it and i think it's something that quite honestly i know it's a little bit of a different thing because you know laney's an amp company and we're a band but i i hope it's an ethos that sleeps can keep throughout the years like yes we want to create some success we've got a really important message that I think we need to put out in the world, but we all, we want to keep our feet on the ground. Mm. That's why like throughout the years, we, we, we've never turned our note. We've never fucking done a paid meet and greet. Yeah. That will never happen. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And we'll always go as long as we can make our way to that merch table and we're not going to get completely swapped. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll keep going there for as long as we can yeah. because that's what we want to do. Like we're just, we're real people. And, and I feel like Lane is a real company. I think when you, Come from an air like areas so small towns like we've come from. Yeah, and I have this imposter syndrome thing. Imposter syndrome is massive with me as yeah. well. Yeah, well, like for me, I'm just like I'll be uh, <laughs> name drop, but <laughs> at the last Sabbath gig, yeah, stood on the stage, and I'm like, what am I doing here? Like what? Like I should I should not have this access. Yeah, definitely. Like, I keep thinking, well, I've got a camera, and I'm going to speak to him in a minute about these big amps. So, I've, well, I've got the pass. 
But it's what so, keeps you humble, though. And I yeah. think if you don't let it completely overtake your brain, yeah. I think if you, you know, because it, it was something that affected me. Like, I mean, and it still does um, to some extent, but it used to affect me really badly mm. because, you know, I was just like, yeah, I shouldn't be here doing this. I'm like, when yeah. is somebody going to find out? When I'm, you know, when we like first signed to like a, like a management company, I was just like, when are they going to figure out that we're just a bunch of idiots? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And... But I think it's something that keeps you humble. And I think as long as you don't let it completely take mm. over, it's something that keeps you grounded. And I think you do need to be grounded mm. in an industry, industry like this. Um, I think as well, when you meet like, the bigger places and stuff that you end up in, and like you end up in meetings that you're like, oh, this is serious. Like, yeah. You're like, this is, or oh, like, do the time yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're like, and then you meet in people that you just think, what? Fucking planet are you from? Yes. Like where? Like, and, at some, and, and at some point, like, you were just at school figuring this out as, yeah. as much as we were. It's the dick measuring all the time. Yeah. And that's I just, I never get it. And I never have it. It's like, that's fair enough. Like, do it. Like, if that like, floats your boat. But I, I just can't get on with it. Well, and that's, something, and, it. and that's something that, yeah, we're absolutely against. And I, and I hate it. And it's cringeworthy, to yeah. be quite honest. That's I think, it. It's cringy. And I think... You know, and you can tell, like, you know, like, is this really who you are? Do you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? And if yeah. it is, I don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, you've always got to be yourself in this life. And if and it will eventually um, will, it will work out for you. If you're yeah. just yourself, then whatever you do, whatever, like, I'm a big believer in what you think about can manifest if you really want it enough. Yeah. And if you put in, not just thinking about it though, you've got to put in the time and you've got to put in the effort as well. But if you want it enough and you're not being anybody else but yourself, then I think it'll work out. I think that's what's happened for us. We were always the five guys who was on a tour. Like there's been so many times where we've been on a tour and we've pissed other bands off so much just because we are who we are. Yeah. We have a laugh. We don't care where we are. We always, you know, we can be in public um, and we could be anywhere. Just and, we ju- and, we ju- and we're just, we're just who we are. Yeah. And we're not going to try and conform to any social convention wherever we are. And yeah. not that we're going to be disrespectful. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But just be yourself and have but a laugh. But it's the same thing, like, that similar thing. So um, through the pandemic, as so I've seen the pubs and that have been shut. And I've been thinking, it's, it's made me realise that I don't, it's not drinking that I particularly miss or anything like that. It's the banter. It's the crack. It's the fact that you'll be having a beer with your mates in the pub or in a, in a place where it's like you can gather. Yeah. <laughs> and just like the, the way that the stories and the journeys go, I just... You will never ever be able to replicate it via a screen, like or you're it's no. very, very hard to No, but, you can't now. And I think as well, like through the pandemic, the mental health side of it has just obviously it's blown up massive because obviously we've all been set in this construct of all the freedom you had. No. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. And I think it's been the biggest challenge has been actually not even accepting that you're going to have a mental health problems and how this, how tough this period is going to be. But I think it's been actually how to get through it. Yeah, definitely. And I don't, I don't think we realised how much we needed other people. Mm. Um, I think this uh, pandemic has kind of blatantly shown us that we are like social creatures mm. and, and we need to be around each other. And I think that's what a lot of, you know, going to a show and releasing energy. It might be somebody's, the, the only thing that they do that week and they've been to work all week and they need to get out there and they'll just be, you know, be like with like with a stranger, just like singing um, and shouting the lyrics to to something that they have a mutual love and respect over. And that's that's what we want to do. We want to create a community like that. And, and you know, and it's not like we feel like we're, we're better than those people. We're not the kind of band who put ourselves, we don't see the stage as a pedestal whatsoever. Mm. Um, we see like we are being raised up by those people completely. Mm. Um, otherwise we'd be playing to an empty hall. <laughs> I, think, I think as well, the, well, that's where like the Sleep Society comes into it so well in yeah. the fact that, and like we have a similar thing with like the Laney, Facebook forum, Laney Amplification Facebook forum. Um, and 
it's this little community and like ours is ours is small yours is growing yeah and you just think this is such a cool dynamic to get these people that were like like you're fans of your own band do you know what i mean yeah that's we always write music for ourselves and it's just and we're lucky enough that other people enjoy it that much as well and if you're doing it for any other reason then it's the, it goes back to just being yourself. You, that if, if if you're yourself long enough, it will work out for you. Mm, you know, definitely. and if so, you if you've got if you've got those dreams and you're just yourself through it, then you, you it will prevail. And you know, and and going back to um, just about like how much like this industry isn't really. It was built a long time ago. Mm. Like the the whole like notion of of like labels and, and, you know, like we're, we're in a different age now. We're in, a, we're in an age where like we've got streaming platforms that don't pay artists very well. Great for exposure to get new bands out there. But like in terms of sustaining that living, mm-hmm. um, it, like making a living out of it altogether. And if, you know, like I think there has to, there has to be another way. And that's why we created the Sleep Society because, you know, there's, there's so many so many of our fans out there who care about us and we care about them. We mm. care about the longevity of this thing um, because it f- like for our own mental health, as well as theirs, like it, it's, if we were to, if we were to break up, it would be like breaking up a family. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And th- I'm sure there would be like people who would be as devastated for us if it didn't work out. And that's why it, like during this pandemic, we were lucky enough to, to, you know, we had this idea for a long time, a long time before the pandemic. And, and I think we were just lucky enough for it to be a silver lining, the, mm-hmm. like the, the way that we released it when we did. Because if it wasn't for the Sleep Society and for the fans getting behind us, then I don't know what we would have done. Mm-hmm. It would have been a massive struggle. I think, but that works so well. <laughs> timing of timing of a pandemic's never great. It's people. never. It's never if, a good thing. If you're planning a pandemic, avoid <laughs> March. Um, but I think. The fact that it landed when you were planning to do everything anyway, yeah. And now looking at bringing new music out, and it just—is it, it, it the sort of the little nudge that you needed to just go, yeah, we're going to do it. We are actually going to do it. And yeah, we were going to do it, but we're actually going to do yeah, it. Sort yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we were, we were planning on doing it anyway, and um, it was it was a lot of a lot of planning, mm-hmm. like and preparing for that initial release. Because um, you don't want it to come out and be shit. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And we were like, we weren't trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. We we are not the first band who's done it, but yeah. we were the first band to put it in such a way that I, th- of like, like this could be a new infrastructure yeah. if we want it to be. And why not? Because, you know, why why not cut out the middleman? And we have the, the fans who are so, uh, who believe in a, in a band's, so strongly and the band also relies on those fans mm. so why why is there anybody else yeah you know like and and if they care about band survival so much then they're almost like shareholders yeah that's you know what yeah. i mean like that's if you think a, about yeah. it they are like shareholders within the band and, and we've always said like the band isn't just us five people that's why we don't like as long as we can we will always go to that merch desk before or after a show and yeah. we'll meet fans because I don't even like calling them fans, you know what I mean? I think that is such a such a weird term. Like, and I, although like technically, you know, that yeah. is what they are, but I think I think it's more than that. It's this connection that, yeah. that's more than that. And and I, they know it, we know, and we and I think I think that feeling's reciprocated. We show that it's reciprocated. It's that synergy, it's that relationship that it's, a, it's completely a two-way street. Yeah. Completely. Um what thing. I'm never going to be sort of annoyed about ever again, ever is oh, going to a gig. So I've got, I've got three on this week. Right. Yeah. Who definitely. am I? <laughs> like, okay. Definitely. But I don't think anybody could have prepared for it though. No. You never think something's going to come along where it shuts down the entire world. Yeah. Um, and hopefully like, although, you know, it's hard not seeing your family and friends it's hard not being able to do anything that is remotely normal. Mm. But, you know, hopefully it is a crash course in helping humanity learn that we, we do need to be, we need to be careful with what yeah. we're doing. Take, to this stock, planet. take stock of what you've got 
and enjoy every moment because it could be literally the last time. Take and, yeah, enjoy every moment, but not at anybody else's or the planet's expense because we, yeah. we've quite clearly seen how quickly things can turn around. And we're this, I'm, you know, I'm a fucking hippie person at heart and I will, you know, and every day I think about this, we're on a fucking, we're on a rock hurtling through space. We haven't got another home. No. Not that we know of. The government could be hiding something. Who knows? Uh, you know. The reptilian overlords could be yeah, up to something. Exactly. Uh, Have you ever been to the Isle of Man? <laughs> exactly. I mean, what's there? Is it a gateway? Who knows? Ooh. To the upside down, yeah. probably. Um, to the but, Joe Rogan but, experience. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, hopefully we can just approach with caution now. Yeah. Um, because if we've just gone through that for nothing... For, for people's perspectives to not have changed, then what's the point? <laughs> yeah, I think it'll change forever as well. But like the one thing I'm so excited to see is a gig or and like making. I to think s- I think we're going to be more aware now that you're there's a potential to have a memory be made every time oh, you go somewhere. Absolutely, like whereas can- before it would have been like, oh, you just you, well you wouldn't have even thought that way. Well, exactly, yeah, but. I, I think it just shows like how how distracted we are and how like I've got a fucking the last 10 years are filled with experiences for me but I can only tell you a handful of them mm. do you know what I mean and hopefully it means that I will take in experiences more be more grateful for them and you know like I, I think the reverse has happened in, in this past year is that we can't we only have a handful of experiences because that's only how many we've had yeah and now I think people, hopefully, hopefully people just take it in more. But I think the reason why there's been such like a mental health um, epidemic as well as being uh, a, a worldwide pandemic is that I don't think anybody's had that opportunity to sit with themselves for this long. Yeah. They've always had something to do and always had something to keep them distracted. And now they've had time to sit with themselves and sit with their own thoughts and are scary to a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. You know? I think... Um... When you, like who, who would have ever had this much time to go and really sort of analyze your life? Because definitely. Like, definitely the first couple of months, like I was very, very fortunate that I still worked for it all. Yeah, and me that, too. And, and, and I, couldn't, I couldn't be more grateful. And I don't know how I'd have felt if I wasn't working yeah. or keeping busy. But then after that, I then had five months off because my head melted. Yeah. And so I sort of had like it in reverse. When everybody was going back to work and things were sort of getting to a routine, not a normality, I was off and I was thinking, bloody hell, this is weird. You see, this, this is why I'm really grateful. It almost doesn't feel like there's been a pandemic to me because we have just been in the studio and we would take this amount of time off and the routines are exactly the same as what they would have been if we were in the studio while the world being normal anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I didn't didn't have it affect me as... I definitely did feel it affect my mental health in, in some respects because, like I said, there's all these times where you would usually be doing something or I'd be traveling somewhere. Like, this is the longest I've been home. The longest I've been in one place to watch, to, like, be in uh, one point of the year watch all the seasons change and come back to the first one that I started <laughs> since I was like 19. That's crazy. Which is fucking crazy when you think about it. So yeah, like my system has been like, what's going on? Because yeah. although, because you know, like a subcon- your subconscious is a massive part of you, bigger than what you think. And you, although in your head at the forefront, you're like, I'm sat here this whole time because there's a pandemic. But it's almost like your emotions have got muscle memory, you yeah. know, and... And my, my, the cycles of my system has, have been like, well, we should be getting ready to go on tour soon yeah. or doing something yeah. and we're not. But, um, but yeah, like you said, um, y- you yourself have always been somebody who's been busy. You've been busy throughout the whole pandemic. Mm. And then are, are you comfortable with talking about yeah. what, what happened? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, um, yeah. So I went to, so did normal pandemic stuff like working from home and this is, oh, this is nice. A screen in my conservatory. And like, let's do interviews with people. Yeah. Uh, like, forgetting that the world isn't all on 
Greenwich Mean Time and doing interviews with artists really late at night or in LA. Yeah. So you anyway. And then I was like, oh, my eyes are hurting a little bit. I'll go to the, I probably need glasses because this is the longest time I've been just sat at a computer each day rather than oh, going out to a gig or meeting artists or blah, blah, blah for years, ever, in fact. Um, and then I went to the optician to get some glasses and she was like, nah, mate, you're, this is bad. Like there's loads of pressure on the back of your eyes and there's no blood going to your eyes and you shouldn't be able to see. I was like, well, I drove here. So, like, what's going on? I'm looking at you right now. Yeah, literally. Like, how many fingers am I holding up? Like, and all that business. So I went to the hospital. um, Didn't drive to the hospital. And um, they did scans and stuff. And they were like, yeah, you've had a stroke, mate. And you've got a blood clot in the front of your brain. And we're going to do some more tests tomorrow. Um, And when they did them, they were like, yeah, you've got brain tumours, mate. Fuck, man. Oh, my... But one of them weird experiences is like, nah. Because when you have a stroke, like you like your arm doesn't work, or like they think that it could have I could have had these tumors there slowly growing for 20 years. Um that's crazy. <laughs> um and then so yeah, so like normal bit of pandemic life, like working from home and everything. And then as things sort of opened and then started to close again, so that was September 2020. And then I was like in hospital, brain open, See, cut a bit off. I didn't. In a bin. I didn't realize until I spoke to you just a few weeks ago the severity of it because how you portrayed it online was not as serious as what it was. Because and honestly, quite admirable. I was, you know, I've said this said this to my wife and uh, a couple of people at warehouse um, when you told me about it. I would, I just said. I could only hope that I would show that much bravery in a situation like that because... But I think it's just coping mechanisms. Like, again, like, I'm from a... <laughs> it's, it's, your, it's your background, it's your growing up. Like, if someone falls over, you laugh while you pick them up. Yeah. Not like... It's that sort of thing. And I think if you'd have said to me a year ago, oh, you're going to lose some of your hair, you're going to have this stroke, you're going to have this, you're going to have, like... It's going to be in- intense... I'd have gone, nah, I won't be able to deal with that, mate. Yeah, but, but until you find yourself in that situation. Yeah. It's so weird. And again, like, recover- I'm fortunate. My recovery's been quick, and it's like, there's still bits that, it's still s- stuff that needs to get fixed properly. Um, but, yeah, it's just so weird. I, and I look at it, and I think only in the past couple of weeks that I've thought I've gone, fuck, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> like... And I, in fact, this is funny. It's not. It's not funny, but I find it funny. <laughs> but if right? you can laugh in but, the face of adversity, mate, that's yeah. That's, that's what's what it's well, about, isn't it? Here's one for you. So I was looking through all the notes that they give you. So I got paperwork coming out of my fucking ass, like from the hospital. Yeah. And um, like you know, it's serious when you're in. Like I'd never been in hospital. That's why I was in hospital, like for more than one night. It was when I was born. <laughs> and um. You know it's serious when they come into the cubicle and they pull the curtain round and there's not just one person. There's like yeah. three or four. And I thought, oh, shit, what's this, mate? And it was the night before the big the seven-hour brain operation <laughs> to take this tumour out. And um, they go to me, here, yeah, we've got these, these pieces of information we need you to sign. And I just went to sign it. They were like, no, read it. <sighs> I was like... That's your automatic reaction, isn't it, now? Yeah, like, yeah. Because we've right. done it for so long uh, throughout our adulthood. It's just yeah. like... What's this fine print? Uh, yeah, fine. fine. Yeah, I'll have a contract. Thank you, Apple. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they probably got my soul many times yeah, over. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> um, yeah, and oh, they're, they're like, no, read it. So I read it, and they, <laughs> there's this little box, and it said all about what the operation's going to be, and you know, there's a this. It's great, and you should definitely have it because you could pull out up until your going to the operating theatre. Like, you can yeah. say, nah, fuck this. No, I was reading it. Hey, it's great to, like, have your head cut open. Ha ha. Like, come on, live, live it up. <laughs> um, and um, there's this box and it said, like, possible side effects and symptoms, like, what can happen. And they'd written in there, like, you could have another stroke, you could have an aneurysm, you could have this, blood clots, blah, 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 blah. And then at the very end of this little box, they'd just written, like, you know, when you run out of space at school and you'd go around the corner of the page, yeah. you'd, like, go down the page, it just said, risk of death. 
<laughs> right at the end. Yeah, it was like a bullseye prize board. Yeah. Like, in one, you've yeah. got paralysis. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but I don't know, like, that, it's just, you just sort of deal with it. And, like, I'm glad, I'm very fortunate and I'm very aware, I think, that you, I, I've been able to sort of cope with it. But it's hit me in the past few weeks, really, coming it, back to work think and having a do. routine. I think, um, like, traumatic situations where you are literally creating mental defence mechanisms yeah. as you're going through it, which I'm sure was, you know, your your online attitude to, towards it. Yeah. Because you, if you was being that silly online, m- maybe in your head you was just like, oh, I can't be that serious if I'm just having a joke, you yeah. know? Um, I think it can definitely, like trauma like that can definitely have a delayed reaction uh, for sure. And what, you know, what you were saying about it not feeling like it happens to you. I think that that's what it's like when life gets fucking serious and it gets down to the wire. Doesn't feel like it, does oh, it? No, um, definitely not. My I lost my mum to cancer when I was in my early twenties, and that whole time it didn't it didn't feel real. Yeah, it didn't feel like when you know that moment when it happens. It do, it doesn't feel real. Yeah. And the and the reason why I say like you know traumatic events. I mean this I mean, this it happened to you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it would have been hugely traumatic. Um, I think I'm only dealing with my mum's death like the, like last year. Yeah. I. I Definitely. And I think 2019 was the point where things unraveled for me. Um, Like just the amount of touring that was going on. It sort of built up and it was a pressure cooker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was a pressure cooker. Yeah. And and the whole like writing and and recording and so what, none of it, everybody was going through a bit of a traumatic experience. Mm. And then after, after writing that album and recording it and that just being hugely traumatic, we threw ourselves on tour for eight months. (laughs) It was yeah, just not it's the intense. it's not the right environment, and, so, and I think that was the point where I couldn't fit any more in the bottle. Yeah. And I was, and I dealt with it since then, but still, still there's remnants, and and I think you know there's so much life trauma that if you don't deal with it, it will come back to de- yeah. to deal with you. It will, think, will pop its head up at the most unexpected times. The time for me, the thing that I sort of noticed because I was going through it and sort of like. Having a bit of having a crack with it and having a bit of banter with it. The two things from it that I've sort of noticed because when you're going through it, it's really strange because it doesn't feel real, but mm. it's like the effect it had on my family, like my parents and my brother, and like me and my brother were really, really close. And when I was saying to him, Look, everything's going to be fine, but just in case, here's the password for my phone. Here's yeah. my password for my oh, email. That's fucking insane, man. And like, he was going, You're going to be okay. And I'm like, Yeah, I am. But, but just like, in case. I've, like, just in case, because there was a 70% um, chance of me coming out of it and something seriously being wrong. So yeah. I, li- literally, first thing I did, I woke up in the recovery room. First thing I did was check my hands <laughs> because can I play bass still? Like, the irony is I couldn't play bass very well anyway. But like <laughs> same. But um, <laughs> um but again, like saying stuff like that, and I think, Jesus Christ, like the when you're going through it, you just sort of plow through it, but it's the effect on others. So like you saying, like you losing your mum, like when she was going through that, she would have just been plowing through it. Yeah. But it's the effect to the support network that that's what I've sort of noticed with this. It's just been like Jesus Christ, man, like, how, for one, how fortunate to have a support network and, like, of people that Definitely. are actually good, but, like, fair play to them, like. See, this is, this is, this is it, man, like, when, when it gets down to the wire, I think human beings show their true colours, and more mm. times than not, we're there for each other, yeah. and, we're, and we can really pull through for each other, and hopefully, it, no, again, this with a pandemic. Hopefully, it's, it's given us new perspective because there's so much, so much smoke and mirror. When there's not something like a pandemic to make us look at ourselves and look at what we're doing to the world, so much we're so distracted with our own bullshit. Mm. But hopefully, we can strip that back, like heading into this, like almost like a new world. Mm. Like hopefully, we can fucking just view it at a new vantage point. Going into talking about. Our new album. We should mm. talk about that. Yeah. Because um, it'll be out by now, by the time this comes out. That's scary. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's gone well. 
Hopefully. Um, is it finished? <laughs> it is finished, yeah. And yeah. it does, yeah. But it does take us a while to finish an album, so... Yeah, but... Um, it, we always yeah. seem to... We don't... It's not like we take our time with it. It always feels like we're, every album is all hands on deck, but it just takes us ages. Yeah, but it's got to be right, has not it? You'd be right, Why yeah. Why would you put something out that you're not quite happy with? Like, We'd never do that. Yeah. Right. And and to be honest with you, we have pushed deadlines because of that many times. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think... I think every band says this, and it's always... And it's cliche, but... I do really, I believe it in my heart that this is the best album that we've, best material that we've ever written. Mm. Um, when Bees was talking about You Are We, um, you know, Terry Beezer, um, <laughs> for some reason this always stuck with me. Um, and I know like me and Matt have talked about it a few times. Uh, when he was reviewing You Are We, he was really into it. But he was said, but Sleeps have got a monster album left in him yet. Mm. And I think this is that album. Sick. Um, just everything about it, we have it's it's literally it's quite literally an all killer no filler. Um, eight full tracks, two kind of like interlude kind of things. Um, and it's yeah, I just fucking without being arrogant, it's just fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, like Sean, like some of the riff work is just unbelievable. And I think you know, like each album is a learning curve. Yeah, and with each album and just with each year like each year as you progress in life like I like to look back and think I was a better person than I was just last year yeah you know and if your music isn't doing that too then you're doing something wrong do you know what I mean and I think the only way you would end up doing that is if you're trying to appease anybody but yourself yeah um and then so if if this if our work is always true to who we are then when I'm never gonna I don't look back over any of our material and think that was that was bad or we'd be doing it for anyone else but us yeah I think as well, you attract similar mind sets, I think. That's the best way to put it. So the people who are your fans, like the people who follow you, um, I think we've got a bit of a similar thing as well. It's a little bit different, I guess. Yeah. Um, like the people that follow your band, you 99% you could just go for a beer with. That's that's yeah. exactly it. That's where there's this sort of synergy between the the music industry and then there's this tiny little sliver in the middle, which is like equipment. And like yeah. that's where I live. And then if that little sliver, there's this tiny little bit that yeah. goes endorsements. But they're so it's so it's such a massive part of the music industry because you think, what does someone play or play or yeah. plug into? But it's this tiny little thing. There's probably only a couple of hundred people that are doing my, like, artist relations, artist manager, whatever, in this industry. And I just find it so mad. But the connection, like, I've always, always said, um, like, naturally, like, with getting artists on board and stuff like that, naturally, we live in an age where you do have to sort of take into consideration the sort of exposure and the social media and all that sort of stuff but because we aren't owned by anybody like it is like for me it's me and then I look above to look at James Laney who's he's my boss and definitely yeah and above him there's the board of directors but on that board is the Laney family exactly (laughs) that's crazy isn't it but it's like for me the connection between all that it's like, well, why are we doing this? Like, why do we actually want to do this? And it's like, well, because we actually enjoy it and we want the best for our fans, for the people who follow us. Like, we'd done a Bluetooth speaker and, like, we could have done one years ago, but we did it because it's like, well, actually, not everybody want like, because a lot of people would love seeing, like, our little small speakers, guitar amps that were for practicing, if you like, but they had Bluetooth on it. And some people said, oh, I'd actually just play my tunes through it. Yeah. And I saw a lot of artists were playing their music through it backstage. Yeah, and that's, they were using that's it, it to warm up. But my, the thing I'm kind of getting to is the fact that the relationship between us, the brand, and like you, the band, yeah. it's just like we don't want... Like, you, like, you, like you've seen like, and you've said about working through the industry you meet so many different people and we don't want people that like if it's hard work on day one 
Well, how is it going to be if we try and build a relationship to the end? Do you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. And I think it's people don't see, and you, you know, you were talking about like like social media and stuff. People don't really see the groundwork that goes into everything. Like literally, like we, like a lot of our personality goes into an album. A lot of an emo, like emotions that we're feeling on that day, like it somehow mm. gets suspended in the feel of the music. Do you know what mm. I mean? And and that's why, although it's a, like a lot of people don't agree with this, the kind of little areas that we try and explore um, as as we develop, you know, a lot some people don't like the the synth kind of sounds, what what we do, or whatever. But um, at, at the end of the day, every album will be a sleeps album because it's us, and we put yeah. our blood, sweat, and tears into yeah. it. And and I think this is this is why. I think there's many parallels with, between like us and just just any kind of business or any kind of so when when you're creating something, if it's going to be a success, you have to be passionate about it. Yeah. Like with with sleep, like especially in the sector of the music industry that we're in, or the genre of music that 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 we do, it's it's hard yeah. to get your foot in the door, you know, and you have to be passionate about it to push yourself past past that threshold between like below, below the threshold is logic and sanity, <laughs> but you have but passion almost. There is, a, there is a little bit of insanity there because I was 22 and eating cold beans out the back of a van on like Bra- in Brighton. Do you yeah, know like, I mean? Is it genius or is it insane? Exactly. The, yeah. the balance is like very close. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And w- what would have sounded like an insane thing all these years ago yeah. when, you know, like he had to create an, an amp, just to play through, you know, like that's the thing that, like, what is just a social quick social media post? Like the the year and a half work that we put into an album, and is condensed into one scroll, and people see the artwork and they double tap it, like it, and move on. Yeah, that's the attention span people have nowadays. But um, yeah, it's it's the same thing. Like you you put in so there's been so much work all the way back to the sixties, and so many passionate people working in it since then, like mm. yourself. And just look at look at how long it's taken to produce this product. Yeah. And now you've got it to the point where it's been through so much trial and error. And that's that's all a working. Um, that's all any product is. Yeah. It's a, it's, a tr- it's trial and error and a work in progress. Yeah, but I think when it does come together, and you've got all the aspects that are lined up in the correct way that you want it to be, it just it cannot be beaten. Especially when you've got a team around you because that's like i've got the team here but it's like our that's our band but like we're we're laney and we're from hell sewing yeah. that's our band and it's it's the same with you like if you haven't got your team around you like your bandmates and you aren't pulling in the same direction and then a little bit off each side yeah. to make it better like then you're always going to lose but if you're all on the same page and you like you're on the same page, but you all want to turn the page, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's that's just the best way to be. And like that, I think that you can take that into anything in life, be it you being a band, be it making amps, pedals, you just your friendship group. Like, how many times have, have people thought, guys, I'm always the one texting everyone, how are you doing? Like yeah. everybody's at it. But there's also a moment where everybody else in that friendship group's gone. I've always sexed them. Yeah. Like, it, it, yeah. It, but like, you always have to, like, you all, you, you stay friends, you stay working, you keep for, for the reason because, well, you want to. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the, for me, that's just the biggest thing, like, through life. And like you said, hopefully you're a better person each year as each year goes yeah, by. Yeah, definitely. And like, same. I think, you know, it, it's, the, the start of the pandemic, they were like, oh, what are you going to learn to do? I was like, well, I'm probably going to learn to, like, get on myself probably a bit better. I'm not going to actually physically learn anything new, but I'm actually just going to take a bit of time to just go, you know what, this is odd. This is new. Yeah. Like, well, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to learn how to bake banana bread, but I'm probably going to know how to... I didn't like, try that either. No, but, uh, <laughs> Probably yeah. might know how to like not be a dickhead to people if I'm like coming in, if I've had a stressful day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like... I mean, life's precious, and yeah. uh, you know, there's there is a fine line between life and death. I'm sure you've got a newfound appreciation for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And if you're not doing what you love, and it's so fucking cliche, but the reason why things end up being cliche is because they're so true. Mm. And it's like, you need to be doing what you love doing. This, but you, you, you wasn't born in, into this world to make somebody else money. No. You know, you've got, you've got to be passionate about what you're doing and you've got to love what you're doing. And if you don't, then quite frankly, I think you're wasting your time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So when it's allowed and we can actually gig again, which I'm so, I'm chomping at the bit to do. <laughs> Obviously, you've got this. So, farmed what head, 8 by 10 cab, ceramics in it, very, very loud and very heavy. You've got to make sure it's difficult to carry upstairs. Otherwise, is it really a base cabinet? Oh, here's one for you. Just a little diversion. Um, this, this, this whole talk has been about tangents. So <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's keep life. it going. <laughs> yeah, 30 years have been all right. We keep it. trying to talk about the album <laughs> and talk about all this stuff, but we keep just talking about life. I just like talking to you, Aaron. <laughs> um, so Lyndon Laney, while playing with the band of Joy, was carrying a 4x12 up some stairs. Something happened where he slipped and this 4x12 cab fell over the banister of these stairs. Mm. Who was walking up the stairs? John Bonham, their oh drummer. God. And he nearly killed him. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, but he was all right. Eventually. Yeah. That's um, fucking sketchy, though, isn't but it? Imagine that. Like, the, Bonzo is, like, regarded as one of the greatest, <laughs> if not the, of all time drummers. Yeah. <laughs> Lyndon could have killed him. So that's funny. But So, yeah, so heavy cabs are good. <laughs> um, yeah. So 8 by 10 it's got ceramics in it. They're HH. They've been made, designed for this range. So this is yeah. a quite a cool thing. Um, we had a different brand in the old cabs. There were a different composite, which is like how the magnet is made. Um, basically, if, if a cabinet's really heavy, it'll be ceramic magnet. If it's quite light, then it'll be a thing called neodymium, which is a carbon composite magnetic thing. Wow. Whatever, yeah. Um we went back to the heavy stuff because it's it's just more traditional. It, it just works. Um, and you, you don't need, with, with a sound as heavy as this can produce, you, you need something that's not going to be rattling around. Yeah, exactly. And um, still got a cool thing. So like the one thing that old amp range did have, we introduced this thing called tilt. So basically, um, if you've plugged into your amp and you've oh yeah, a little bit of bass or a little less treb or whatever, and you've got your perfect settings, then you go into a room and it's just changed because each room is different. So you don't want to mess around with your EQs, but you, what you can do with Tilt is you can just roll it off and it's like a seesaw to your tone, to your EQ, if you like. So roll it off a bit and it makes it a bit more thumpy. Roll it all the way off and it's very like dubby, if you like, yeah. and same the other way around, but like more trebly. Um, so we kept that on it because like, even though it's vintage styled and everything, like that's a br piece of brand new technology from a couple of years ago. Yeah. And we're like, you know what? That was such a good USP. Let's keep it on because, again, a lot of the artists that I've got have said, you know what? I'd be playing on a hollow stage and just all the bass is just getting dropped. Yeah. But I just roll the tilt in. I don't have to fuck with my settings, my EQs, nothing on the board. And I've just got that thump again there. Sometimes you need the extra little bit, like you said, especially if the stage is hollow yeah. or like depending on how big the place is. See, the, when I'm sometimes dialing in my tone, you have to take a big step back to be yeah. like, because you're not, this is right next to it. It's not where anybody's going to be listening to it, including myself. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you need to, you need to like dial in your tone and take a good few steps back to see. Yeah, so like see what it sounds like. That's gonna that's gonna sound different on the Roundo stage than it is like in O'Meara, sure, in yeah. London, whatever. Like naturally, because you've got one is a huge, big, open, round building, but it's a su suspended floor, if you like, so it's raised, and then you've got the raised stage on top of that. Yeah. So like the bass naturally is gonna just look like the thump, if you like, the yeah. thunder is gonna go to the lowest point before it travels. Yeah. Because that's how, how it will work. Um, so it's good to have them little features on it. Cool thing about this, so you've got your um, FET volume, so that's like channel one. So that'll be down there. So that's just like a nice clean tone. Then you've got your tube channel, which is like your valve. But you can pull the valve, the tube volume, and it'll blend the both. Now, again, it's... 
an idea because so a lot of distortion and sort of um sort of more overdrive pedals um the sort of <laughs> best kept secret to them being good is you have a high pass filter on it yeah and you can roll out the sort of the hiss that you get with distortion but you still keep that sort of thud and thunder of it yeah so with them two channels there, when you can blend it, so you've got the option of having sort of like a gritty sound, but you've got nice clean undertones that so your actual note is still being pushed through. Yeah. Um it's kind of like having your distortion pedal with the high pass filter on it. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Which is sort of the secret to a good distortion pedal. Um then these pedals, so we've got a compressor, which is called the Custard Factory, because that was the name of the building where the first Laney factory was. Yeah. Um, obviously, the range is called Digbeth. That's an area in Birmingham where the first Laney factory was that Lyndon set up in Peaky 67. Peaky Blinders, <laughs> yeah. Go on, Tommy. <laughs> um, then we got the 85, which is a octave and a fifth pedal. And it's called the 85 because... That's the number bus that Lyndon used to take to get from West Brom to Digbeth, on, like before he drove. And then we've got the distortion pedal, which is called the Blackheath. And Blackheath is a place that is just up the road from here. And we used to have a factory there in um, in the 80s. Um, and then we've got the preamp as well. And the preamp pedal <coughs> is essentially like you're flying somewhere... You can't take this or this, but that's got the sound in it. Yeah, well, the, the head is is small enough to be able to be taking that anywhere anyway. Yeah. But in the cases where, like, if if we're flying to Southeast Asia and we've got like pretty much no bag, baggage, and I'm probably not going to take that to. No, but somewhere. you got it there. But that's it's right there in that pedal, yeah. which is which is amazing. But again, like for the person for the player that doesn't actually want a big rig. Um, or doesn't want one of these options, say, that you're getting the same sort of tone and sounds, very, very similar to the head. Yeah. Um, and But it's it's just a board thing, and obviously pedals and boards are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so that's pretty cool. But the cool thing about these, so 8x10, which is the standard in sort of like artist world, if you like, mm. but actually practical for the little person who's playing at home, yeah. who's, who wants to get into a well they're not really because that in your bedroom is pretty i mean i'd you know that's that would still suit me for like having like a home rig yeah i mean and well that's why we've done so this so bass is always put into the category of 10 inch speakers and usually you have a four by ten cabinet um and then possibly like a bigger inch speaker at the bottom and the reason why you would then have a bigger cabinet at the bottom, so a 4x10 and then say like a 1x15 or something, is because you need that lower bottom clarity. Yeah. So you put a second cabinet. But we were looking at it, we were like, smaller rigs are being more practical, more useful. So actually you put the 500 head or even the 200 head that we make as well. This is actually a 4x10, but we've made it so it's a little bit taller. So... Again, it feels like you're playing the massive rig, yeah. but it's just a little bit more practical. It's the wheels and stuff on the back of it. But and then the other one, the little guy, is two by twelve. Now, twelve inch speakers are usually found on guitar players. The so guitar players get the fun with twelve inch speakers, but we decided to just to try it because bass sounds so good with twelve inch mm. speakers. And um and that as a little rig, actually, that's that's a perfect little home rig. Yeah, exactly, we've got a two hundred yeah. watt two ten combo thing as well. But that, like, I've used that in band practice. Yeah, with a loud and acoustic it's drum, and it's, it cuts, man. Yeah, because all the cabs are four ohm as well. Yeah, so when you're plugging a head into a cab, it's the full power all the time. Yeah, whereas sometimes in previous iterations you might have to have another cabinet to get the full power of the head. Definitely. So yeah. you have to split the sound. But um yeah, and I it just it's taken a while, but it's just so right. Yeah, it's it's great because I think, you know, I do like something that is really simple, really easy to use, but how produces a great sound, you know mm. what I mean? Um 
But yeah, like especially with um, the distortion, the Black Heath, um, it, it is really versatile. And like you were saying, like plugging your Rickenbacker in, a sound that would suit my grabber would be t- totally different for the Rickenbacker, yeah. you know what I mean? And But you can dial it all in for whatever kind yeah. of setup you got that them, you've got. You have three settings on each pedal. Each pedal has a switch in the middle and you can choose like three different options. And the, on the distortion, for instance, in the middle setting, you've got like an overdrive. So like one of these being like really pushed. Then you've got a top setting, which is a bit more like a more vintagey valve sort of sound. Yeah. Um, and then the bottom is a bit more of a fuzz. There's there's slight iteration. Like the, then it's not like drastic sound. Yeah. But again, like you said, your grabber, the passive pickups on it, because it's a 70s one, right? Yeah. It's 76. Right. So the 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 pickups in it, they they were just wound differently. And they're yeah. they're different pickups as well. They're like not your standard sort of type of pickup. No. And it was completely different to my Rickenbacker. But that's the switch setting in the middle just works because you can just go. I, you dial in your tone to different instruments really, really quickly. But and it's the same with the we got the octave and the fifth. Like really just, didn't think I'd enjoy that as much yeah. as I did. But I think with like so you got the choice of going two octaves down, <laughs> and you can control how much of the two octaves you go into. Um, but then there's one octave up, which I just was not when I first tried it. I was thinking. Uh, this is going to It's gonna the sleep. octave up that was really But when you put cool. plug it into like a crunchy tone and then you add a bit of distortion, it's just something I was just not I'm expecting da- would, to I'm work. definitely going to bring it to the table and be like, guys, we need we need to open up a part for me to to, to <laughs> write something with that because, yeah, it's so it's so cool. It's so like rage against machine, in it? It's, well, yeah, you started playing Balls on Parade, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, my God, why didn't I think of that riff to play? Because yeah, yeah, well, so cool. when I f- first did it, I was thinking, think of all the riffs. Come on, come on, get play some more yeah, riffs yeah. that will fit it. But That but, was that was the perfect riff, I think. That's, but, like, as soon as I heard it, I was like, this is exactly what it's made yeah. for. But again, but, you know, it's the fun and the enjoyment and the excitement of making stuff. And I just, I get a real buzz from for finding that bit of tone, like, like I was saying, when we were developing these, I stood side stage for you at Trees and I heard your rig. And then I went and stood with Vadim White at side stage at his gig. Um, and I was like, "We that is a sound. That a, and then the more gigs I was going to, I was like, it's that sound again. Yeah, yeah. It's that sound again. It's that sound again. So it, the passion to get it across and it actually be a... That's a real thing there. It's yeah. like, oh my God, it's actually happened. Um, it it's looks, a bit, looks beautiful as well. Well, I think, like we, like we said, like, it, we're in album. an industry that's so vain. Yeah. Like, whether we like it or not, it's such a vain industry. Like, I didn't, like, but we, I think, well, it's, yes, I mean, of course, like, the main point of it is for it to sound good. Yeah, but if I get that, but like, if everything would, if every band were only about the sound, no, no band would have a name or, Album covers, yeah, or nobody would have ever grown their hair. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's about it's about both. It definitely yeah. is. And I think getting aesthetic, a lot of the practicality is obviously it's got to be number one. Like it sounds shit. <laughs> yeah. They're only going to play it. They might exactly. play it once, but they don't play it a second time. Exactly. And I think like, but aesthetic, you've got to want to fall in love with it each time you play it, and like, or when you walk up to that stage, or you walk into that bedroom and you see it again and you're like oh god that's so Definitely. cool looking. I mean the first time I'll use this will probably be in September all being well yeah. on our UK headline and yeah I'm fucking looking forward to using it mate I'm so so buzzing like yeah I'm, I keep smiling to myself <laughs> and oh my god gigs like and to having like because this journey like from that conversation at Trees and it's like yeah like you're a laney guy now and it's yeah. like oh, it's so, it, so worth it worth yeah, every I'm... little moment and like to for me the moment will be when it's on that stage yeah. and you boys come out yeah and i'm like jesus christ what a full circle this has been definitely so... and it's very rare that like i'll get like you, these are your pedals too do you know what i mean yeah. and i've 
like usually I'm changing my pedal board like fucking monthly. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. like trying to figure out what I like best and, and sit the tone quest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> and it, which is a fucking one hell of a quest. But yeah, honestly, it like I said, it ticks every box for me. Yeah. And I, and I love it and I can't wait to use it. We always said, this is quite funny. Um, the perfect amplifier has got one knob on it and it just says underneath it, your sound. Goes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Straight. Like, but you know, Obviously, that doesn't exist. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think this is as close to that one knob I'm I think it's as close, as close as we can get. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, thanks for having me down here, man. And, yeah, thanks for talking to me. And, yeah, this is the start of a beautiful relationship. Mate, honestly, like, thanks for coming. Thanks for holding on <laughs> and waiting. Um, but, yeah, like longevity is the key with this I think Definitely, and yeah. um yeah it's not just uh here's the amps thanks see you in a bit like yeah. nice to meet you it's like yeah let's grow this man yeah like fucking down fuck yeah let's do it